Welcome everyone to Enlightened Masculinity, where nothing is taboo, all is possible, nothing is forbidden. And we have three men here. You don't see it on Instagram because you got to come to Zoom. So go to my bio, click the link in the bio, and you can come to the Zoom. Uh, and if you're on Facebook also. So there's three of us here, and I'll quickly introduce us all. I am one of your hosts, Yogi Chris PhD. I'm a doctor in the human universities, but don't let that fool you because I'm actually the founder of Ninth Limb Yoga, and I travel the world teaching my brand of yoga called Ninth Limb. And this podcast is uh, sponsored by Ninth Limb. So shout out, hashtag Ninth Limb. I'm joined by my other co host Akash Inti Katakam from Montclair, New Jersey. He's a biotech research analyst at one of the biggest drug dealers in the world. I won't even name it. It's up there. You can talk to him about that. He's also a registered yoga teacher and starting his yoga following there called the Rising Suns in Montclair, New Jersey. Welcome to the show, Akash. And I'll also introduce our uh, guest today is Ryan McAnufo, aka IMC Ryan. Uh, I'm sorry, IMC Brewster. <laughs> Just goes so easy right there. And we are all part of this over a uh, bigger family called IMC, which is uh, there's a man, he's alive today. His name is Arash Zapar Dibazar, and he formed this brand called IMC. And I'm sure we'll get into that. And so we all studied that material and are avid students of it. So we'll get into it. It's very male, female dynamics, social dynamics, the dating game, relationships, uh, evolutionary psychology, how humans uh, evolve in our mating strategies. And, but we're not going to get too deep into it today. We're just having a polite, friendly conversation about expressing yourself at higher and higher levels of relating with the woman, uh, higher and higher levels of relationships. And with that being said, I'd love to hand it over to Ryan, and I'll hand over the first uh, commentary and questions to Akash after Ryan says his piece. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Chris, Akash, uh, here we are again, you know. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Chris, that was a wonderful intro. You, you always do such a great job of packing it in there uh, and great vocabulary. I'm still, I'm still taking it in. I, that's one of the great things is that I, I want to be here. I, I want this opportunity to, to be with my brothers, to share this philosophy, um, to express these truths that we have made into our living, our character, our ethics. And so today that's a really cool topic as we grow um, as people inside of these relationships, uh, whether it's people or not, uh, we need to learn how mm -hmm. to express ourselves in these new levels. So of course we were gonna talk a lot about people, but I also wanna point out that, you know, I work in relationships and communication. So this is everything from guitar, music, Okay, so a person has to develop these relationships and as they grow with these relationships, they need to understand that that's a new opportunity for expression where the lower levels only gave us a certain layer of expression. So that's kind of what I'd like to get into today, what it means to us, um, especially us falling under this, uh, you know, beautiful pyramid, you know, as it were. And uh, so, yeah, expressing oneself, the, the truths of it, what it takes trust, honesty, and where our, uh, where our ethics fall in line with that, how we express that in our actual living. Josh, what do you think? Uh, of that, yeah, this is beautiful. It's actually, earlier today, I spent some time uh, watching uh, Vince Kelvin and, and Arash D. Bazaar's um, Be True to You events. So spent most of the day, or a good amount of the day, actually going through this itself, and it's a topic that's so, so important. Um, one of the big things that I took away from, from, from the recording itself was the idea that it's so important to like, first even know, like you need to start with just defining, like, what does that even mean? Like, what do you, what do you stand for? What does it mean to be, um, with yourself or be true to yourself? Um, so many times in today's day and age, you kind of get lost in, it's, it's very easy to get lost in, um, the stories of others or, or what others view or their values, et cetera if you're constantly taking things in and there's a, there's a benefit to that. Gosh, what does it mean to you? You did all the studying today. What's it mean to be true to you? Well, this is what I'm exploring right now. Right. I was like, I, to be true to myself, I guess is really, uh, it's, it's living in uh, the moments where there's something that I want to say and I express it immediately versus holding that communication in and changing it. Right. So it's recognizing immediately that it's kind of like an intuitive voice, if you will, 
communicating directly the words that are being thought of and being spoken as they're coming out of the, the mind when, when a communication is given. Um, recognize wow. it. I think that's being true to you. Yeah. Wow, that's so fascinating. I'm like, I'm totally in disagreement with you. I, I, I hate that. I love that. Let's go. Let's hear it. Yeah, this is this is it. This is beautiful. I'm all ears now. Wow. Okay. So here, I, I like agree 50%. I like agree 50% with that because I think list that internal voice or that internal impulse or uh, what I want to say, what I want to express, but then being true to me uh, because I know that, you know, all is one and I don't want to hurt other people because I, I will, if I feel as if I'm hurting other people, I carry that memory with me and then I'm hurting. So hurting other people, I hurt, I hurt myself. And so I don't want to hurt people. So I deliver my message in a way that is in harmony with who I want to, the role I want to play. And so being true to me is not only my earn, uh, my honest, I don't want to say earnest, my, but, but you know, my clean, clear per expression, what I want to say, what I want to get out but I will manipulate it so that it's um, agreeable. It's the agreeable truth. And because I, I'm, I am not separate from others, so just saying what I wanna say, irregardless of the listener, uh, I don't think that's true to me. I think that's true to the false me because that's, that's the me that thinks I'm separate from others. So the true to me it takes into account the listener and then I uh, adjust the message Accordingly, that's that's my idea because then that the problem with that is it changes through time. You know, my ethics, my my how do I calibrate my communication changes with time. Um, so I don't know. That could be a rabbit hole. What do you think, Ryan? I think that was a lot. That was really cool. <laughs> uh, I know that um, you know one time me and Chris didn't actually uh, agree on some of the things we were talking about subconscious communications and like the uh, internal dialogue. And this is this is what's cool because. I get to go back over this. I get to go back over this and really delve in and dissect what Chris is saying there. And I can really go in and really dissect and divulge in like what Akash is saying. For me, myself, <clears throat> this is about relationships. Okay, so let's talk about the relationship that Rooster has with himself. Okay, because above all, that's the contract that I don't want to break. Um, and inside of that relationship, I have to trust myself enough to express myself. So when you're being true to yourself, I think it's a matter of freedom because when you feel free to express yourself, I think that's the, the realest expression one can have from the point of understanding the terms within themselves. Because we were just talking about define the terms. I really like that, Akash, actually, because I'm getting into that with uh, a lot of my girlfriends. First, let us define uh, our terms. Okay, because what is one word to me is for sure 50% possibly not the same meaning to you. So inside of that, you have these two people and we're growing, you know, in levels, we're growing physically, we're growing emotionally, we're growing spiritually as time goes on. So as we hit these little clicks, how are we allowing ourselves to express ourselves. So I think when you're consciously aware of the fact that you are not your body, you are not, you know, those thoughts and you are not your emotions, when you are understanding that you're the witness, I think you can divulge a little bit deeper into the know of the relationship with you. You know your terms you, so that from that point, then you can go to the outside party and say, hey, like, who are you? Because I know who I am, now we can play because otherwise it's just people trying to relate. And that's what we get into out here is everybody's just trying to relate. Therefore, nobody knows how to relate inside of relationships. Yeah, so right. here we are. Yeah, that's, huh. that's incredible. So there's a couple things here that, that came up for me. One okay. is pro tip uh, that I've le I learned this in school itself and I was always seen as like great at this was define your terms first and foremost. So, so important. Start any discussion defining what are the terms? What does it actually mean to, uh, to, to, to say something? So. Cheers to you on that. The second one was, yeah, it's exactly about getting to know what is it exactly that you, what are your terms for moving about in this world? What are your, as we talked about, as we called them ethics before, um, your agreements with yourself that dictate how you're going to act with not only yourself, but with others in the world. Um, and so it's, it's really, really important to get these down um, and to make, 
to define the game, if you will, define are like terms. What, are there some terms, Akash, that you're uh, that you're looking at right now? That is, uh, it sounds like there's some terms that um, are in your mind right now that we should clarify, maybe. Um, nothing, and I I'm not sure. Uh, there wasn't anything that I was thinking of in particular in that sense, but I, I think it's important to, I guess, in this in the sense of level setting at the very least of what does be true to you mean. I think that's a great place to start with this, and then. Yeah. Um, and, and getting into that, because there's oftentimes one of the things that I learned from, from classes and, and discussions itself was you could spend the whole lecture just on the definition and you never. I also just want to point out very quickly yeah. that as good as we all are at micro seeing everything inside of each other, as good as Chris was just seeing and basically expressing, hey, there might be something that Akash wasn't, maybe he wasn't aware of. I was seeing Chris was using his, um, let's call it his superpower, just being who it, he is seeing you for that that's that's a teacher ability that's that's again that's a quality that he's worked on dealing with people being able to see that i appreciate you know, that you know? it's tuned in so yeah i caught that i saw that and it's it's weird i'm looking at the try screen yeah, so i watch you catch him and i'm watching you do the and it's i don't know i thought that sure. was really cool it's really fun. you know what i was listening to to a posh i almost called you a rosh is and this is like a new research uh, new, new area of my focus is the emotion, uh, the motion, emotional output of the other person. Whatever they're talking about, when is that emotion higher, stronger, more amplified? That's where I want my communication to go. I don't want to be talking about the bland thing just because the words were interesting. I want to talk about the, um, the emotional thing, whatever the words are. And so Akasha's emotions kind of, the, the tone uh, grew when it came to define your terms and this and that. And so, and it, it, the emotion carried for, you know, a few measures. I kind of hear talking almost like music, like a few measures of music. And it, so the tone carried and I was like, oh, is there something here? There must be something uh, invisible in Akash's mind that I'm not seeing that is that he is emoting about what's going on. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's the brilliance for me of like being in class. I remember I always would be like, I'd always be in class and I'd be like, oh, well, why don't we define this? And I would take the whole class on the discussion. People would be like, well, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like the teacher's like, this is fucking brilliant. And to me, it's like, this is where you start, you know? So that's, that's where that, I guess that's that emotion or memory, if you will. Um, yeah. But it's so, it's so important to, uh, this was like one thing I prided myself on was always making sure to define your terms. Yeah. It's, it's superior communication. Yes. When we take these strategies um, and we fine tune them, you know, out, you know, in the world, and then we bring them into a relationship, let's say that matters more to our survival and our future, that's the time to flex it. That's the time to be understanding and be the person that is going to care. Because, you know, in proper, in proper seduction, it's, it's just less about me. Shout out to Arash. He is just seriously, uh, He's seriously the one, you know, if it wasn't for these teachings, uh, we would not be here. That's, that's my personal belief. Um, and let's I just can't say it. it. Let, let's yeah, let's together. talk about like, it. The next level you were, you, we can't, you come onto the podcast. You're talking about the next level, expressing yourself, the next level of what do you mean by the next level? That doesn't, five years ago, before okay. relationships, levels yeah. of a relationship that term like what's that term mean if we're going to define okay it? so when i say levels i find myself with a certain uh certain amount of awareness inside of the relationship currently whether it's just beginning i start with a certain amount of data with a person so when i when i attain another level what i when i know i've attained another level here's how i actually know and can recognize it my awareness starts catching new things because from this, maybe in the beginning of the relationship, maybe week one, day one or whatever, my awareness was only scanning, only able to uh, take so much. So as the relationship begins to grow together, we're going to see certain things, something that maybe they didn't uh, exemplify before. And you'll find yourself, this is how, again, that I'm, I'm basically catching myself at a higher level. So I'll keep practicing and keep relating. And then by doing that, just like any other skill, 
I, it will become more easily to me. The conversations that I'm having, the energies and how I'm communicating to the subconscious, it becomes so much easier. All of a sudden I start seeing things from a newer perspective. And that's when I realize that I'm at a higher level. So that's the point. Once I realize right there, I'm like, oh snap. I just became, you have those moments. That's the groundwork. That's the point where you start expressing yourself. You gotta start experimenting there because that's the, you don't want to start experimenting when you're on the big stage and playing your new licks because you might mess up in front of somebody. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, because my experience is that, uh, um, like, I don't want to give up too soon before the new level comes. What, what is it that happens? You know, because the, the level is earned, right? You earn this level of awareness. And what is it that comes right before the new level? The challenge. Like, okay, go in. What is that? What do you mean? Um, it's presented by nature. So this is really good because this comes from what Shane was talking about uh, in the last podcast, shout out to Shane Smith, everybody. And please check out that podcast on the camouflage of nature and just how it's presented. This so is where I'm getting on enlightened right masculinity, right? When we Bang. Have here. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Come check it out, everybody. Yeah. Sorry. I left that out. So, uh, the challenge is presented by nature. You'll find yourself in this relationship and things are going smooth, right? All of a sudden, either metaphorically, physically, whatever she does this, she's like grabbing for the wheel, right? Everything's going fine. I got the lead honey, this is good. All of a sudden there's like this hand coming over and like you get this, you're like, what's, you feel intruded because that's what's happening. Like there's literally like this hand coming over. So you have a, a very specific, uh, this is a special chance for the man to be uh, dismissive and non-reactive. This, this actually took me like, I'm not going to lie, like years to be able to develop this and oh, oh, incorporate oh, oh. it into my I know this word is going to, Akash, did you catch on to that word? What's the word that needs to be asked about right here? This is, uh, Akash is a ninth limb apprentice extraordinaire. What's the word that needs to be unpacked that he just said? I would probably say dismissive. Hell yeah, dismissive. That word, every feminist on planet Earth is going to, like, what do you mean dismissive of her? <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Okay, so my frame is that I am the leader and that I have a job and I know what's best. So it's not that I disregard everything that she's saying. I'm dismissive in the sense that unless it registers as valuable to our survival, it's not going to penetrate and be anywhere in our relationship. At that point, it's just a, it's just a suggestion. It's just like, eh, maybe I'll have this for lunch. It's, it's nothing determined. It's nothing that I'm actually going to allow. Because remember, she's just, I don't know what she's going to do with the wheel when she's reaching. I don't know. She, she could just grab it and be like, see, I told you we're going to go straight. Well, okay, but still, you're just taking my, my role. Okay, so it's a, it's a, to be dismissive when you feel a challenge is the, is the winning move. Let's unpack the word. So, if someone's dismissive with me, I want to try on the feeling of what it's like if someone's dismissive with me. Is it that I'm not important? Or is it maybe what I was saying is not going to apply to our survival in that moment? So I know so, right. if a teacher, if yeah, let's let say, uh, go ahead. The thing I'm seeing or what I'm hearing is the, it's the idea of, uh, I guess, masculine feminine or or dominant submissive or uh it's it's the idea of like in every scenario you can either be you're either the teacher the leader or you're the student or the follower if you will right so yes knowing your lane and staying in like okay this is the area of expertise for me and this is where i'm the leader but then there's other yes. areas where you're not necessarily the leader and that's where you follow so absolutely and i'm pretty i'm sure that uh you know chris goes over this in uh you know ninth limb and uh the male female energy this is these are there's seven you know laws in this hermetic principles and uh one of them is the law of gender and they gender is manifest in all things it is always at play it's at play right now as i talk the energy is coming through and you take the energy in okay and that's male female and vice versa when it switches so a real hermetic master is going to understand the swings the rhythm, the vibration, the cause and effect, the correspondence, okay, 
Um, and then gender is placed inside of that. So the masters, when they're having a conversation with you and they're manipulating reality, what they're doing is they're at a level of their relationship with themselves that they can recognize that they're at and then they begin to express themselves. Uh, again, this is spiritual. Like, That's super highly spiritual. You know, at yeah. a level of relationship with yourself, you know, because when, when, when you're just an animal in the environment and you're relating your, to yourself as if you were just an animal in the matrix, it's hard to see cause and effect from a meta perspective. And as you elevate in your awareness, you become a little more divine. And as you go levels and levels up, you see yourself as more of this whole, you know, as we're talking about IMC, we're going to cut this episode and go into another one. But one thing I'd like to get your guys' last take on this, I'll hand it over to Akash. Uh, after the idea, you know, IMC is the brainchild of Arash the Pardibazar, my teacher. And he uses this idea in game of, you know, what role do you want to play? Like the game is not about getting the woman. The game is about what do you like about yourself? <laughs> like what, what role do you want to play? What do you like about that role? And if you elevate that role, if you amplify your power in that role to God level, to genie level, to superhero level, what, yes. would, be, what would be your irreplaceable quality on earth? And just go for that. And women and getting women is just like an element of that. Of course, if you were God level of whatever, you would get – so don't worry so much about getting women. Worry your purpose. He's very spiritual in that way. And as yeah. you're saying, you know, as you level up, uh, as I saw what you were talking about, you see more of that cause and effect. And so you can harmonize with bigger principles mm -hmm. at play. And, and that – I just want to point out real quick, that actually came from – um, in the beginning, well, it's still going on, but in the beginning when Seductive Instinct, uh, Arash's uh, first company was uh, created, uh, that was uh, what we were going off of. Um, that's how I had to uh, see myself. It was from some of those previous encounters, uh, it carrying over. Um, and it's, it's inner game, that's what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this outside, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, capture the oh, seduction man. it was inner game he's like because yeah. I asked him I said you know I asked questions like about God and believing in certain things because I was like maybe this guy knows I swear that's yeah. how I felt so yeah. I was like I gotta ask him and he's like let me ask you something first <laughs> he said how much do you believe in yourself yeah and fuck there was the beginning he's right. like right let's start there Let's start right there first. I believe we should start there. And oh my goodness, I just realized I was trying to fix all these relationships. And this is where the beginning was. I was like, it is as within, so without. So it's the principles of game. And then there's the spirituality that was uh, expressed inside of it, which I think Arash, inside of studying game, discovered these... So magical. You're yes. so magical, man. You're so magical. <laughs> yes, it's the divinity that uh, is the, the Shiva consciousness. The the you put the male plants the seed. The seed within the relationship is the divinity. It is yes. the role you're playing, and it's you. Yeah. you know, it penetrates from within. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we'll definitely pick it up again with that. Akash, do you have anything? I'll let you, uh, or or not even let you, but um, if you want to wrap up the episode and any final words on what we're talking about. Yeah, closing thoughts, I guess, on my end are if you're interested in this content, like, subscribe, share this with others. I mean, this is the, we love this stuff and we want to share this with the people who, who want to know more about it, who are interested in social dynamics. Oh, yeah. Where can they find us? So check us out on Facebook. Look up the Enlightened Masculinity Podcast group. Oh, yeah. Um, from there, I think we close it up here. It's on iTunes, everybody, we're on iTunes. So definitely, if you want to catch all the episodes in order, iTunes enlightened masculinity. If you're catching this on iTunes already, leave us a comment, you know, leave us a review. We love that. And, uh, yeah. Any, um, anything else or we wrap it up there. And, uh, if you want to check out, uh, rooster IMC's, uh, social media and yep. such, uh, do you want to throw a little, uh, type it out right now. You can get a hold of me on Instagram and on Facebook and, uh, look forward. I got some, I got some projects I'm working on right now and I'm really excited about them. Oh yeah. Awesome. So thank you everyone. We'll see you in the next episode.